Okay, and here's a look at our, all our uh, timing components. Uh, well, there's our water pump, and as you can see, it's leaking a little bit, starting to seep out of the weep hole that's down here. So it's a good time to replace that. There's our uh, tensioning roller. There's our tensioner. Here's our idler. Uh, there's our oil, oil pump. Our balancer shaft. Balancer shaft belt tensioner. All these tensioners, all these uh, this, uh, these uh, rollers, they all are new. Also the timing belt as well, because I replaced them not too long ago, but this water pump I didn't replace, and this uh, tensioner I didn't replace, so I'm gonna replace the water pump. This tensioner, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be okay just reusing it. These last for a long time. Uh, and also this is in good shape, it's not leaking or anything. Okay, so before I take out this timing belt, there's actually uh, three timing marks down here that you need to have lined up before uh, you go and put the new one back in. And also it's a good my, uh, good idea to line them up now so that you know, putting them back on will be easy. Okay, the first timing mark is gotta be on this oil pump and this pulley, that notch that's in the pulley needs to be lined up with here when you're at top that center. This obviously isn't because the, the person I had to put this uh, cylinder head on this car when he replaced this, obviously he didn't line that up. Next is your crankshaft timing mark which is that guy that needs to be lined up with that notch in the back that's you're gonna have a hard time saying but that you know and also actually it's kind of funky the way they have it lined up it's not really spot on but I'm sure see there this is how they have it lined up this is how it's supposed to look like okay cuz this car ran fine and the top mark of our camshaft is at exactly top that center so I'm sure this is how it's supposed to line up but it's not exactly dead on either, okay? And the last but not least, uh, these timing marks on your uh, balancer shaft. Uh, as you can see, there, there's that mark on your shaft and then this mark on the side that they need, that you need to line up with, okay? Well, actually the way I'm gonna take this timing belt off is actually take out this tensioner. That way, that will release tension on the belt and it'll be a lot easier to take it out, okay? Okay, and this tensioner is held in place by two 12 millimeter bolts. There we go. Okay, now with the tensioner out of the way, we should, there should be plenty of slack in this timing belt and we should have no problem at all taking this belt out, okay? There we go. Okay, next to take out this balancer belt, we'll need to loosen the bolt for this uh, tensioning roller first. It's gonna require a 12 millimeter socket or, or a red wrench. You know, actually, we're gonna go ahead and remove it just to make life easy. Especially if you're replacing this, you're obviously gonna to wanna to remove this. We are not going to be able to take this out without removing, uh, unless we remove this uh, crankshaft sensor. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, and there's uh, two 10 millimeter bolts that hold this crankshaft sensor in place. Okay, and here comes our crankshaft sensor. Okay, next we'll remove our tensioner pulley, which looks to be held in place by this one uh, 12 millimeter bolt. There we go. Okay, next it's time to replace that. It's gonna require a 12 millimeter socket to take that out. I'm not gonna replace it because I know it's new, okay? Okay, you know, actually I'm just gonna drain the coolant the, the lazy way, which is to just loosen the tire, our uh, water pump and then just drain it from there. There's uh, five bolts that I can see are holding this water pump in and they're all 12 millimeter, okay? And they shouldn't be in with a lot of torque. So you might wanna, you might need to get one or two of them from top. Sorry. Okay, if your water pump is as old as mine, you're gonna have to pry on it a little bit to get it to come loose, but again, have your catchman underneath. I'm actually go to try to pry on this from the top. Okay, here we go. Hopefully you have your catchment underneath here. Now I'm just gonna let that drain out for uh, for a while before we completely remove our water pump.
Okay, so it's been about uh, half an hour. I went to the parts store and came back with a new water pump and now I just started taking out our bolts. Just you want to keep track of which bolt goes where. So these two are the same size. They're the longest ones. Then it's these two here. These two are the, uh, I guess, mid-size bolts. They're the same size and this is the smallest bolt. Okay, I'm gonna go back up top and just keep uh, trying to pry on this because it's not coming out by hand, okay? Okay, let's see how lucky we got with the gasket. We did not get lucky at all. Jeez, all of it is still on the engine side, so we're gonna go about cleaning that now. Okay, say hello to the fun part of the job. Now we need to clean up all this old gasket material. Well, you gotta get a razor and you know, actually this might mean not be that bad because this is coming off in big chunks so kind of got lucky but uh you may not be as lucky and if you're not then there's no way around it you need to spend a lot of time you need to get these surface the mating surface of the block and the water pump needs to be really clean and smooth otherwise you risk uh getting a leak here and doing the <clears throat> entire job all over again okay so spend a lot of time spend take your time and you know use razors rags break clean whatever you have uh, whatever you can uh, to uh, to clean this all up and of course you're gonna have to clean up this entire area which has a lot of dirt and grime where the tiny bolt goes and all your tensioners and stuff so get some break clean clean rags and Spend a good half an hour, you know, cleaning this area up as best as you can, okay? Okay, actually before you start cleaning up, it's a good idea to, to put this, attach this gasket to this uh, water pump. So that way when you go to put it back, it won't be, you know, moving all around and uh, giving you a hard time. But what I did is actually just put a dab of silicone on the outside of these uh, bolt holes. Just a little bit is fine, so this thing sticks to it. I don't like to put RTV silicone all around the gasket because, uh, you know, it's just, in my experience, it's not just not necessary, unless the manufacturer asks for it. And according to all data, uh, I didn't see anything that mentioned putting RTV silicone on this water pump or the engine side. So basically, I just put small dabs of this RTV silicone on this outside edges of this water pump, and then I attach this gasket to it and you want to lay it flat maybe put something on top to put some pressure on it and let it sit while you're cleaning up and it will you know it will keep this gasket in place make your life easier when you go to put this water pump back on okay okay so just got done uh, cleaning up that water pump surface uh, it wasn't that bad I got lucky just use the razor also don't forget to put that o-ring back on that uh, coolant pipe make sure you you know lube it up with some clean coolants and that way it will it will the, your water pump will slip, so slide on there easier. And here's another look at this uh, crankshaft gear and the timing bar mark. There's also a, actually another notch at the back of that gear that will actually, that's actually lines up with that uh, with that mark on the engine side. Here, I'll give you a closer look. There we go. So this will help l line that up. Okay, so next we're gonna put on our water pump. We're gonna make sure it goes over the that coolant pipe, and then we're gonna have two of these bolts ready to, to put it on. Okay, okay and actually uh, I okay, popped I this water it. pump over that coolant pipe from the top. I used this uh, long long screwdriver, I kind of stuck it in there. It's not a good idea to use your uh, your power steering pump pulley as leverage, but it doesn't take a lot of pressure, you know, it just, it just popped right in. Okay, next I just like to get these bolts started by hand. You might have to wiggle this water pump around to line them up a little bit. And this is where it pays off, putting that gasket on first on the water pump, okay? Okay, next uh, I like to just hand tighten them and I'm going to start, I always like to go from the middle out, so I'm just going to use uh, go from this one to this one on top, back here, then this one, then that one in the back and then I'll do another pass and torque them down and the torque spec for these bolts is uh, 11 foot pounds, okay?
Okay, next we torque them down going the same same route as when we hand tighten them, okay? There's one, two, and then this last one that we get to from up top. There we go. Okay, what I'd like to do next is just add as much coolant as I can to the system. Uh, you are probably going to have to squeeze this uh, upper and lower radiator hoses just to get all the air out and get as much as coolant you can in the system. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've, 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 I just did this and I was able to get a lot of this coolant back in the system. And then you want to go check for leaks because if you have any leaks, this is the time to find them. <laughs> you don't want to put everything back together and put coolant and then realize, oh, the water pump is leaking. So yeah, and as you can see, we don't have any leaks, so we're going to move on to the next step.